Hello and welcome back to Jarvis Johnson Gold, the premium channel that is free. <laughs> um, it is free. But if you're watching this, you're premium. And today, it's been a while since I have talked about brand Twitter, but I have to address the Radio Shack problem. We all remember Radio Shack. Um, no one watching this channel remembers Radio Shack. You're all too young. I kind of remember Radio Shack from when I was a kid, kind of. It was a store that was like a shack where you could buy radios. <laughs> right? <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, it was like an electronic store, you know? They failed to adapt to the rise of the internet and they went bankrupt, essentially. They went bankrupt twice. And then in 2020, they were purchased like this company that is owned by Ty Lopez, who's one of those like get rich quick, like read a book a day snake oil salesman on YouTube. He purchased the, I guess, dead brand of Radio Shack, along with a bunch of other dead brands that he owns, like Pier One and uh, Steinmart or whatever, they pivoted it into a cryptocurrency. So now Radio Shack is trying to do crypto because I guess we live in hell, but okay, so you've got a new crypto. Obviously that's gonna go up and be extremely successful, but how are people gonna know about it? Well, you've got a tweet and that's what they did. And so for the past, I don't know, couple of months, Radio Shack has been acting a damn fool on Twitter in the most hello fellow kids way. Like Radio Shack has taken to Twitter as if the year is 2014 and we're all laughing at a, at Wendy's ratioing somebody. It's completely out of touch. It's clearly written by a team full of old people. It doesn't work. <laughs> it's like their strategy is not working or maybe I'm wrong and uh, we'll all be buying pizza with radio coin. In, in very short order. You be the judge. I don't know anything. So maybe you aren't on twitter.com slash Jarvis always be plugging like me and you haven't been seeing the Radio Shack tweets. Maybe you have a life is what I'm saying. I'm just gonna look at some Radio Shack tweets that have been, have been archived because they tweet and delete a lot for obvious reasons. Before we get into the actual Radio Shack tweets, I wanna give a bit of a content warning because the tweets are all extremely sexual for some reason, or at least a lot of them are. And there's no reason that they should be, but this is the world that we live in. So I feel it's important to let you know what I'm about to read. Um, and what I'm about to read is, if you find a squirter, marry her. Cool. This was the tweet heard around the world with Radio Shack because everybody was like, why are you, why are you tweeting that? If we put our thinking caps on, we know that the reason is because everybody's going to go, oh, ha ha. Oh, ha ha, Radio Shack. That's a wacky thing to say for a brand. I'm going to like that. Simple as that. You can see Radio Shack has its uh, uh, deal with it glasses on. <laughs> it's really like, how old is that meme? It's from fucking what, 2010? Literally, <laughs> they don't know what they're, they, this is the most boomer shit in the world. They truly think that they're connecting with a younger audience with these tweets. And they are, but like in the wrong way, like we're laughing at you, not with you. Are these ridiculous brand tweets keeping you up at night? Thought so. Well, I know one brand that'll help you sleep. Today's sponsor, Helix. Helix Sleep makes premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs, and they're delivered right to your door. Sleep, and not a lot of people know this, is very near and dear to my heart. I need at least eight hours of sleep every night, or else I don't feel very good, uh, mentally or physically. And then I also spend a lot of the day in bed as well, just hanging out. So a good mattress is a very important thing. So everyone's different and Helix knows that. So they've created a sleep quiz that'll help you match your unique body body type and sleeping style to the perfect Helix mattress. Based on my quiz, Helix matched me with the Twilight mattress. And I also got a couple of dream pillows and a weighted blanket as well. You can personalize your mattress even more with the Glacio Tex cooling cover that will help you stay cool during these hot summer months. Actually, I want one. And so I 
got one as well. I've had my Helix mattress for a couple of weeks now, and I wake up every morning feeling cool and refreshed. When you order your Helix Sleep mattress, you'll get a 100 night sleep trial along with a 10 year warranty. And there are financing options and flexible payment plans if needed. The best part of it all is that Helix delivers your mattress right to your door for free within the US, and it comes rolled up in a box that's super easy to set up yourself. Go to the link on screen or click it in the description to get $200 off of your Helix mattress and get two pillows for free. Thanks to Helix for sponsoring this video. Now back to the shack. What else we got here? Not gonna lie, my boss is kind of thick, LOL. You know, just like things, oh, so edgy, so inappropriate. Why Why are you saying that? Intern who runs the Radio Shack Twitter account. Of course, this is actually written by a 30 year old man. Old business plan, politely sell HDMI cords to customers. New business plan, snapping necks and cash and checks, bitches, cool. The name Radio Shack is derived from me shacking up with your mom and playing the radio real loud so the neighbors couldn't hear us playing full contact rugby in bed. They're trying so hard. They were like beefing with influencers for a while. You know, Coffeezilla called them out, of course, because they've got a scam crypto coin that they're trying to shill. And also they're owned by like Ty Lopez and he's already got a number of failed <laughs> crypto projects under his belt. Mudahar tweeted about it, of course. And then they, I don't know, is, this is kind of racist. I don't even know what this is. You know, G Fuel Energy is reaching when they send their token Indian guy. Hashtag get some diversity, bro. I don't know what they're trying to say here. I assume that everything that they tweet is super good for the brand and it's they're selling lots of radios. I want to briefly touch on the pain that Radio Shack's current Twitter presence is causing its longtime fans who didn't like it enough to keep it in business, but did like it enough to like have a, you know, nostalgic feeling towards it. I've shopped at Radio Shack my entire life and to see something like this on their verified account is heartbreaking and earth shattering. Radio Shack, you just lost a loyal customer all because you wanted to pander to the radical left. Christian God lovers and customers won't forget this. Okay, this is a joke. This has got to be a joke. So when they tweeted the squirter tweet, which is unfortunately a phrase that I have to keep saying, Twitter suspended them, I think, for like violating some sort of rules. I actually don't know. I mean, people say some wild shit on Twitter. I do not know what actual rule they broke. But then when they got their account back, they tweeted, Shaq intern here. I wanted to take a sec to reflect on my post. I know you're expecting me to say in my wildest dreams, I never thought that this tweet would go viral and to apologize, but I did because I know that shit was fire AF. No, we didn't get hacked and no, I'm not fired. Buckle up, bitch. And it's like, that did really well. That that did really well for them. What am I trying to say about this? Uh, there's not an intern. It's, it's like a team of people writing tweets or at least approving these tweets or pitching ideas for tweets. And they're all old. <laughs> I am pretty sure. And also like this whole like intern running the social media thing is is kind of annoying because it is always an adult social media professional running these accounts and it's kind of like shitty to b belittle their position. They're just doing their job or whatever. And I am gonna belittle though the people behind this account because they're, they think really highly of themselves, let's just say. And uh, how do I know? There's an Input Mag article called Meet the Guy Behind Radio Shack's Horny Twitter Account. This fucking guy. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce that. Uh, Chief Marketing Officer Abel Zuper. Chief Marketing Officer is bringing the 100-year-old company into the shitposting era. It's something that we all wanted. This article kind of tells the story of things that we've already talked about in this video, but I want to get to some of the actual quotes from the Chief Marketing Officer of Radio Shack, because when you juxtapose what they're actually doing with what they think of what they're doing, it's pretty funny. To boost its profile, the shack is channeling its finest internet shit posters. You really have to make an impression in order to basically get known with youngsters. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Abel here declines to share his age, <laughs> which I think he may have already given the game away with this youngsters quote. Okay, so let's look at this LinkedIn page. So I just want to point out that if you go to his LinkedIn page, which, you know, no one should be harassing this man, by the way, that is one obvious. Two, uh, it's relevant here because I think 
seeing how he sees himself in this piece that is about him where he's named as the chief marketing officer. I think it's relevant information, but no one should be harassing them or, or what have you. Chief marketing officer, Radio Shack, contracts, experimenting with new strategies, optimizing them and implementing them. Oh, okay. So you, you experiment with new stuff and then you optimize the stuff and then you implement the stuff. So this is the most generic, <laughs> the most generic fucking description of a job of all time. This could be about anything. 100 million organic impressions in the first 72 hours. Cool. That's, I mean, that's impressive in a vacuum when you don't actually know <laughs> what the impressions were for. <laughs> you know, if I run on the field naked during the Super Bowl, I'm going to get millions of impressions. But is it going to help me sell crypto? I hope. While Radio Shack is figuring out what it wants the voice of the brand to be, Zuper resolutely knows what he doesn't want it to be. Dull. If you look at any corporate accounts, all of them are pretty boring, says the marketing exec. Hmm. That's not something people really engage with. That's more content people will be reading but not talking about. People are talking about your brand because you're tweeting shit posts. It's not going to convert to anything. Even this video right now, I'm sure, you know, someone in Radio Shack marketing will see this and they'll put it in a slide deck and they'll say, oh, look at all this earned media. Jarvis got these views talking about our brand. That's an improving, increasing our brand equity. It's not. You're fucking, it's not going to be worth it for you. It's worth it for me because it's interesting content. And for you, if we look at your fucking crypto coin, oh, look, in the last seven days, it's fallen off a cliff. Oh, in the last month, it fell off a cliff. And then in the last seven days, it fell off another cliff. Oh, it seems to just be falling off a cliff because no one gives a fuck about your crypto coin. It's never going to be relevant. Mark my fucking words. I will eat my hat, which I'm not wearing because I, if... Somehow, some way, the Radio Shack crypto project becomes relevant in any meaningful way. But guess what? It won't. And you'll all just continue wasting your money because this bubble is bursting and you're late to the party. Again, <laughs> sorry, sorry, Radio Shack, but you were late to the internet and now you're late to crypto and you're, you're going to go bankrupt again. Mark my words. There's a great thread explaining why this is by someone who is much smarter about marketing than I am, Jack Appleby. I, I follow his tweets. Uh, I think he tweets like insightful stuff about the internet. Jack does a little thread about the Radio Shack squirter tweet and why it's not a good idea. And uh, Radio Shack takes it upon themselves to kind of flame him in the DMs, talk about how, you know, his, you know, uh, thread was mid or whatever the fuck, whatever the kids are saying these days. Yeah, here we go. The post you put out, it's kind of weak. The brand you brought back to life from the dead is kind of weak. That's why it died already. <laughs> the brand wasn't strong enough. Then like the next day, Jack did a Twitter space. Radio Shack, like, they went into his Twitter space and they tweeted like this boomer ass, I don't know, what is this, takedown? Where where he's like, they're trying to do a gotcha for this thing that's clearly a, a South Park reference. And it's also for in 2009, <laughs> which uh, is 13 years ago. And of course they, they do a successful ratio because that's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. It's all about the ratios because that's going to, earn us cash. We're gonna turn our ratios into radios. No, <laughs> it's just not working. It's clearly not working. And um, it like doesn't matter how many fucking impressions you get. No one gives a flying fuck about Radio Shack. Even like if you go back to this article, when this new CMO joined, they were just talking about crypto stuff. And then he started doing the shit posting on top of that. And he's like, yes, we do have a cryptocurrency swap, but that's not the complete business. There's way more to the business. And then they just talk about merchandise, which if you go to Radio Shack's website right now, fresh new products, Radio Shack crypto, Radio Shack is back hat, 
Radio Shack Crypto Center. Who is buying this? Who wants this garbage merch? Who is trying to rep the Radio Shack Crypto? The fuck is this, an old radio? No one is paying $25 for this. Shack is back, and then there's all of the other zombie brands that fucking Ty Lopez bought. We all remember Dress Barn. I can't think of my childhood without thinking about Farmer's Cart. Oh, what memories we had at the Franklin Mint. <laughs> Since they introduced an element of outrageousness to the company's Twitter feed, he says that he has a team of people who workshop material, but he's responsible for everything that goes out under the Radio Shack handle. A team of people behind, not gonna lie, my boss is kind of thick, lol. Dude, it takes a village, it takes a village. A team of people behind thirst posting to Wingstop, thirst posting to Wendy's. You know, Wendy's famously is the blueprint for this sort of brand behavior, and even Wendy's doesn't engage in it to the degree that Radio Shack is doing now. But the funny thing is if you read this fucking Input Mag article, you would think Radio Shack invented brand Twitter. They're like, we're just being quirky and outrageous. And I think the youngsters are kind of into it. Like it's, it's just the oldest fucking trick in the book and no one is fooled by it. It's all about putting information in front of the people that this brand still exists. And this brand is way cooler than it used to be. It seems like it's working out. Because you tweeted, due to inflation, six inches is now nine inches. The brand is cooler now. Because you tweeted, woke up feeling rough. But I remembered I put a stripper's kid through college last night. We all good. The brand is cooler now. <laughs> Any coolness you are able to build with your little shit posts is evaporated when you see all of the fucking crypto posting that they're doing. No one gives a shit. Anytime they tweet about crypto, no engagement. That should be a sign that people are engaging for the shit posts and they're not engaging the crypto stuff because there's no audience overlap between those two things. There's just no point. You may as well be tweeting about elephants. Dude, all of our viral elephant tweets are really bringing attention to our carburetor business. <laughs> Dude, the motor oil business is actually thriving due to our tweets about The Simpsons. Like it just doesn't, like there's just nothing there. And even though like in Jack's thread, it was pretty funny because in Jack's thread, he actually tries to get a hold of them to talk to them. And then they end up just <laughs> asking him if he wants to be an affiliate for one of the dead brands that they represent. Radio Shack's CMO email me back. He was supposed to connect me to his content marketing team. Instead, he offered me an affiliate marketing deal. We're running several online stores, including Radio Shack, Bodybuilding.com, Ralph and Russo, Pure One, Dress Barns. <laughs> Fucking Dress Barns, Steinmark. It's like a <laughs> linens and things. Hell yeah, brother. Then when he asked for business results, they just sent him Twitter analytics. And it's like, this is impressive, again, in isolation, but you can cross-reference this with the crypto price. And not to mention crypto is all is is going through a bust right now you, okay 32 million profile visits that's awesome that is converting to nothing i almost guarantee that's converting to nothing you would be better off tweeting about fucking radios so that when you got a radio follower they gave a fuck about your radio tweets but you're just tweeting to an audience that doesn't, that's never going to convert. The younger audience isn't going to buy your coin. And so none of this matters. Or they're not going to engage in whatever other business is going on. Buying apparel and merch to remind themselves of the good, the good old times at the Radio Shack Crypto Center. Like it just doesn't. <laughs> makes sense to me. The marketing chief acknowledges the haters, that's me, who accuse the account of resorting to cheap tricks to gain attention, that's me, but says that's okay. We would prefer to have that ratio instead of people not even knowing that you still exist. Let's talk in a year. <laughs> Let's talk in a year and see if you prefer that ratio. Uh, I wanna get through this, but there's a couple more of my favorite moments in this article. So the squirter tweet, which they keep referring to, and I'm sorry, I have to do that also. He believes the squirter tweet, which he says also resulted in Twitter locking him out of the account temporarily, popped off because of its relatability. This is something so-called bros would be talking about with each other but nobody would be saying this publicly, especially not a brand. What are you talking about? No one is texting the bros going, hey bro, if you find a squirter, marry her. Thanks bro, thanks for that bro-like advice. No one is talking about this. It's just a shit post. That's why people are engaging with it, because it's stupid. That's not a real take that people, there's not real squirter discourse going on. Like it just doesn't make any sense. So then they post the apology and he says, that was so down to earth that people know it's not a brand talking. 
that's exactly how we know what brand is talking and it's a lie <laughs> you're you just told us about how you are workshopping tweets with a team of people and then and then it's like now that i tweeted about that fake intern story everyone can relate with us and they know that we're a team of marketing executives just like them we're all marketing folk out here this brand has a personality and it's not just someone doing a nine to five job posting all day long what the brand wants them to say but it's literally that <laughs> it is literally what do you think this is our friend are you that disillusioned that you think that everyone's like, oh, my friend Radio Shack, he'll just say anything? No, we've been here before. You're not fooling anyone. You're so late to the brand Twitter party that you think you're inventing this shit. It is baffling to me that like you can do this interview and have such a misunderstanding of why people are following your account. Am I getting angry? <laughs> I feel like I'm yelling. It just keeps going. Radio Shack starts off with a good morning tweet followed by a twist. And an hour or two after that, another tweet that sets the theme for the day. Themes include uh, crypto posting and sex jokes, I presume. I asked my friend Nathan who used to run the Stakeham's Twitter account. You know, uh, I feel like one of the first accounts to go truly meta with the brand posting stuff. And uh, he, he said, I wish I could say we've seen the end of horny brands, but I believe this timeline is endless, which I think is just a great succinct point. I do think it will never stop because there's something that tickles you when you see a brand being horny on on Twitter. And it does not mean that it's going to convert to sales. And I think that at some point, people are gonna learn that. But until then, we just have to deal with it, I guess. This interview ends again with just, just a complete lack of awareness of the space that you occupy. This quote, so this quote is about the speed that the Radio Shack Twitter presence has grown. It's definitely a great case study, both for us and others, about how you can make an impression on people. On social media, if you're a brand, you're not gonna achieve something unless you're gonna take risks and do something that no other brand has done in the past. Wow, I just cannot believe it. It's just, it's like if you don't study history, you're doomed to repeat it, you know? And that's exactly what's happening right now. We're repeating horny brand history because there's a new horny brand that doesn't know that it's been done before. They genuinely have no idea. They end this interview by saying, there are a lot of different takeaways. I would ask about the idea of making deep research on this to someone at like Harvard. <laughs> okay. I don't, I can't top that. I cannot, I don't know what to say to follow that up. So um, I think we're done here. So in short, a famous snake oil salesman is selling new snake oil and crypto is involved, which is, let's just say not got the best track record right now. We've got marketing people who think that they have discovered fire <laughs> in the form of her horny tweets. And that's just the state of the world in 2022. I don't really have anything else to add on this. I don't, I'm not even mad. I just think it's, it's absurd. It's just so ridiculous to me. I probably wouldn't have made this video if I hadn't seen this article and saw how like highly they're thinking of themselves for a project that is doomed to fail. If I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, I'll take the L. Uh, I will, I will. But I just cannot imagine a universe where this strategy is successful. But hey, I uh, don't know anything. I just make YouTube videos and hopefully you had fun because I am sweating. <laughs> it's kind of hot. Um, yeah. All right, well, thanks for watching this Jarvis Johnson Gold production. Stay gold, everybody. Bye.